Talofi for Dropy Hoops News. Um, and I'm very delighted to be sitting here at Galacon with P, um, who's a very prolific musician, roughly in the area of hardstyle, hardcore dub style, drum and bass, and Eurodance. And um, first of all, which name do you really prefer? Uh, Keep on Rockin' Brony or Icky? Well, uh, Keep on Rockin' Brony is really like the old name I used to use, and I think most people still know me by that name. But at one point, I switched to Icky on Skype. Everyone started calling me Icky, like all my friends started calling me Icky. It was like a nickname uh, Interrobank Pi gave me. Uh, and um, I basically wanted to switch to a different music, like uh, Keep On Rocking Brony was really just hard style and ponies. And with Icky, I just wanted to do drum and bass, I wanted to do house, I wanted to branch out. And I didn't want to be confined to hard style and ponies. I've also done some non pony music on uh, my new channel, Icky Official. So uh, that's the reason I switched names. And uh, I prefer Icky because it's like my new name, really. And Keep On Rocking is like my old alias. And a lot of people still call me that, but I prefer Icky. Okay, so really, Keep On Rocking Brony is absolutely fine. Yes, now. it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, Icky is the name I go by nowadays. Yes. Good. Um, so, um, how long actually have you been doing um, what you do? Have you been composing, producing music? Producing. Um, I started producing in uh, 2009, the summer of 2009, so that's three years ago right now. But I've actually only been actively producing for two years. Uh, I produced for about a year when I was 14, so it was summer of 2009. Uh, and I quit after about a year because um, got into like video games, got a bit addicted to those and uh, I didn't really, uh, I, got, I got bored of it really and then at one point I got into My Little Pony, you know, the show that was uh, 2011, I think April of 2011 and uh, I picked it back up again with Remix War 2 and uh, I'm really happy I picked it up again because I've been so much more creative and uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying producing uh, and yeah. So, ponies uh, really got me creative again. It's nice to hear. Um, it is, it is. And um, you already told me that uh, you are in fact uh, going to Everfree and W. Um, yes. Congratulations to that. Thanks. And you could, try to, uh, could you still um, go a bit into detail about what your Operation Icky entails? was, yes. Um, uh, well, I was planning on going to Everfree Northwest. Uh, they told me I was I was gonna go like they uh, they had enough money to make me go. I, I barely make any money myself, so I couldn't pay like a plane ticket. Uh, but at one point, it turned out they didn't have enough money. But uh, my I already told my parents, you know, I'm going to the states and uh, my friends, and uh, it was really really disappointing. So uh, we just decided to. Um, make an album like make a fundraising album sort of like balloon party but way smaller in size of course and we only had a month i heard it like two weeks ago uh, we only had a month to create an album and release it and make the donation money so to get a plane ticket and they're getting and they were getting more expensive every day so we had to make an album and i wanted it to be good quality as well because it was the first thing i was gonna release so uh, me and a bunch of friends like a heart attack uh, Pinky Cake, Michael A, um, Dave, we all got together and we made uh, Operation Icky um, and we made, we made uh, seven songs for that and we uploaded it to Bandcamp, uh, promoted it on Tumblr, on YouTube um, now I've got some help from uh, other people like uh, the Balloon Party guys, they posted it on their Facebook to promote it a lot more and uh, we made enough in donations and uh, we have got some very generous donations uh, from Tombstone, for example. Uh, we made over uh, 1,100 US dollars in total in donations and in sales. So um, I bought my plane ticket last Friday and I am going to Everfree Northwest, yes. Cool. Now cut to your um, work um, as a musician on a very deep technical level. Um, what exactly? Um, is it that you use uh, as uh, like accessories in hardware and software, uh, sound libraries and so on um, to produce your music? So uh, this is basically the question where I get to geek out about exactly. my own music. Feel free to geek out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's actually not that that interesting, 
uh, not even to me, I think. Uh, I use FL Studio 10 on a PC, on a Windows 7 a computer. And um, hardware-wise, I use uh, two monitor speakers, Behringer B3030As. They're good speakers, uh, very affordable as well, so I'm really happy with those. Uh, uh, MIDI keyboard, 49 keys. Um, I think an external sound card, Firewire, that's very important. Without those, your entire songs will start glitching up. So um, that one's really great to have. Uh, like I said, I use FL Studio 10. And uh, software-wise, like VSTs and plugins, um, I use Arts Acoustic Reverb and almost everything. It's the best thing ever made, Arts Acoustic Reverb. It's a very good reverb. Uh, it has a very uh, really natural sound to it. It sounds. It doesn't sound cheap like some reverbs, like uh, Fruity Loops, the Vault Reverb. That sounds a bit cheap and harsh, in my opinion, compared to Arts Acoustic Reverb. Yeah, <laughs> and other than that, I use uh, SPL Transient Designer, which is like a good transient uh, shaper. So getting the kicks and the drums and everything sound a bit more punchy. Of course, I use Massive. Everyone uses Massive. Nothing new there. I use Zebra 2. Uh, for like leads, I use JP GP 6K or was it GP K6? I'm not sure, but it's like um, it's a small synthesizer that only has super saws in it. But you can get a lot of sounds out of it, and I use it. I usually just use it for some background leads and pads and such, and uh, a lot of FL default uh, VSTs, and um, that's about it. I think Camel Fat Free for distortion, homicide. So pretty standard stuff there, I guess. It's nothing special. I don't use sound goodizer, so I guess that always, oh, that's already a plus there, but it's like an awful plugin. Yeah, don't use sound goodizers. Never use sound goodizer. I'm talking to you, Wooden Toaster, and to you, Living Tombstone. Stop using sound goodizer. No excuses for sound goodizer. Continue. And, um, <laughs> and on that note, do you plan on pursuing a professional career in this field? Um, I, well, honestly, I would like to get into, like, make it a career. Of course, I think most people would love to make their hobby, their work, you know. But honestly, the EDM cra uh, scene is very crowded. Uh, lots of really talented producers like myself. I mean, just look at the Brony community. There's already a ton of really great musicians there. And uh, the whole EDM scene, it's really hard to make a living as a producer. You usually have to DJ as well. So, um, but yeah, uh, if it happens, it'd be it'd be great, you know. But uh, it's not like I'm gonna I'm not gonna go to university or anything. Uh, as I'm planning to pursue music, I actually am thinking of doing uh, music as, as, stu as studying music, something in music like audio engineering or something i'm not sure honestly i'm still in high school at the moment so uh, we'll see i'm uh, w i might but i do but i i doubt it honestly okay hey, so um that brings me to my um and that brings me to my next question um what exactly would you um, say are your uh musical influences um uh, my musical influences you mean my inspirations? Inspiration, and, uh, people who yeah inspired yeah. you and them. Um, I think I have to. I will give a little shout out to Addictia. He's uh, another brony musician, and um, like uh, over the last couple of months, he's really helped me a lot with my own music, and uh, he's been a pretty big source of inspiration for myself. Um, and uh, like uh, m musicians outside of the brony fandom. Musicians outside of the Brony fandom, um, I'd say um, uh, Receptor is probably my biggest influence. He's a, a Russian uh, neurofunk producer, but he's really diverse. Uh, he, every any every song he makes has like a unique sound to it. Like he doesn't get stale, and he's he does he does everything he touches. He does amazingly well. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Noisia and uh, silent so those are all like neurofunk producers that's a genre I'm, i really dig um outside of that i uh, really like excision uh, i really love i really love rabbit killer um and uh, caravan palace uh 
DJ AKA, um, how we pronounce that correctly, and um, yeah, uh, lo lots of artists actually, but uh, I'd say like um, uh, Silent, Receptor, Noisy are probably the three biggest, and uh, also Rams as B. There's there's a lot of them, <laughs> so uh, it's hard to sum them all up, but yeah, you get the, the picture. Um. Now, I'd like to think of a good segue, but I can't think of a good segue. Um, so, uh, but this is actually a question that um, I like to ask a lot. Um, how would you uh, define your personal style? Oh God, um, this, this question is really hard for me to answer because I don't really notice any style. Um, I don't really have any style. There's, I try to do something new in every song I make, like I... Um, I, I try new genres and I try new new things in every single song. So um, I, I don't re I know I don't notice anything I repeat in every single song I make. Like a little thing I, that's definitely like oh yeah that's definitely icky sound you know. Uh, maybe others will be able to tell you what, but not me. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted you to actually take notice of the uh, genres of. Um, yeah, hard style, hardcore, dub style, um, but also drum and bass, your dance, and of course a few others that you've uh, already mentioned earlier. Um, I got into uh, hard style at like two, in 2007, I think, uh, and it was because in my country, in Holland, in the Netherlands, a genre called jump style it, it was really popular, like mainstream popular for a while. So at one point, I think in 2006, this was it was in 2006 or 2007, I'm not sure. I downloaded like a uh, bunch of uh, like a playlist of jump style songs, I think, and I disliked most of them, and I only kept like five of them. And later on, I like I think I YouTube searched the songs, and I found out that they were all the songs I saved weren't jump style, but they were all hard style tracks uh, confused for jump style. There, there's a pretty big big difference, but uh, they get confused. Sometimes. And uh, yeah, I basically got into the that genre. And I got into uh, hands up the same way. I think like it also confused for for jump style. I think, and um, through that I just got interested in electronic music, and I came across electronic genres. I actually I think I actually looked electronic music up on Wikipedia, going through like the lists of genres in electronic music. So there's a lot of them, and just like. Um, I got linked to some music, or I found random. Uh, I randomly stumbled upon them, or they were linked uh, to by friends, or like at the suggested videos on YouTube. So, yeah, uh, that's that's how I found most music, like most genres I listen to. Okay. The internet, basically. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, that's actually uh, already um, the the upcoming question is actually already my last question. Oh. Um, so um, you already have collaborated with various other uh, musicians in um, the Brony community, uh, um, but um, uh, can we uh, look forward to any uh, more collaborations? Anything you can already already yeah, um, I can, give away? I can. Uh, well, I don't know when you're putting this video up, but at the moment stuff is probably already released. There's um, uh, I'm doing a collab with uh, Dictia on a uh, song. Uh, Legends of Equestria, that's a work in progress, that's like not the uh, official title yet, but it's probably gonna be, I'm not sure if it's a good title, but, um, uh, yes, and other than that, um, I still want to collab with Art Attack, with Michael A, with Hate Seed, properly with Hate Seed, um, with Dave, there's a lot of artists I still want to collab with, but every time I, st I start to cl uh, collab with someone, it's like uh, we both sort of forget about it and it never gets finished ever i think i've tr i've tried to do like at least 10 collabs with other musicians and honestly i think i've only finished uh, one of them or two uh, i think i finished like one track like here we go that's with whitetail and um yeah i did one collab with sai like a year ago yeah other than that i haven't really done that many collabs actually yeah. Um, hey, thank you. That uh, concludes the interview, actually. <laughs> Thanks.